Hi, welcome to a T4LT interview. Instructor Phil Brown is with me today in the studio and he's agreed to answer some questions about his use of YouTube in his courses. Uh, welcome, Phil. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. Great. So YouTube hardly needs any kind of introduction, I think. Um, but I wonder if you could tell me what YouTube is to you uh, as an instructor, okay. how it fits into the realm of education. I use YouTube a lot, and uh, I teach two film classes, for instance, uh, film analysis and U.S. film history, that necessitates lots of video. And of course, there are different ways to put video on, but a person can very easily set up a YouTube account of their own and uh, either, one, uh, find pre-existing materials that are out on YouTube and uh, link them into your class, and we can talk further about different ways to link it in and or you can produce your own material, which I do as well, uh, a, a great deal, particularly in the film analysis, is self-produced uh, items, clips, talking about principles, or just me doing little lectures uh, or self-introductions uh, that uh, I can link to my angel courses and let my students uh, have access to it. And again, it puts that, I think, a, a more personal angle to uh, distance. Can you share with us a specific assignment that you're pretty proud of that students do with video? Well, sure. Uh, in my uh, film analysis class, for instance, uh, I have a, a major section on editing. Okay, and maybe we'll be talking about the 180 degree rule. Okay, and I have a, a demo that I have done of myself uh, with the crew around, okay, that actually shot a 180 degree uh, operation, and I have them go look at that. Then I say, okay, go and find a clip on YouTube, and this is pretty routine for the discussions I do. I go out onto YouTube, find a clip that you think demonstrates whatever it is that we're talking about, embed it, okay, and discuss it. How does it work? Okay, so doing the 180 is good, doing a, a cut on action is good, uh, doing a eyeline match cuts, uh, I'll, just a whole variety of things. Or looking at setting and mise-en-scene, I'm going to go and find a clip that demonstrates an interesting use of setting. Hmm. And uh, allowing them to, uh, I, I think that works better than in film, you know, you can talk about it all day. Mm -hmm. Right, but then you have the actual thing there, and you can say, "See, okay," and then you can, uh, it's it, it works better. So in film, this works really well. What about in English classes, other courses? Oh, I use it in my writing classes as well. Not as much, I have to admit. Uh, there, oh, for instance, in a paper, let's say on evaluation, okay, I have a thing where they. Uh, have to. They are like the editor of a magazine, and they have a contest where they have to go out and find. Well, what's been submitted to them are uh, music videos, okay, and then the, they'll have to find music videos and then embed them. Or I will pre-select music videos and say, uh, "You are the judge on this, uh, you know, Kirkwood Idol type of thing or whatever. Uh, which one do you think wins, and why?" Okay, so I'll, I'll use those embeds as well. Uh, on my end, I don't have them embed uh, in the writing classes, but in the film classes, yeah. I mean, in film history, same thing. I mean, if we're dueling what uh, uh, slapstick comedy of the of the silent era, I want them to uh, go out and find me, a, find us, and that's the thing. You know, it's a community thing. Find us a clip that uh, you think demonstrates Charlie Chaplin or whatever. So, a lot of this video work does it take kind of a lot of time? Does it seem like, is it, does it pay off? Is it worth it? Well, oh, I think it pays off. Uh, it really doesn't take any more time than just setting up. Well, for instance, for the, like a talking head thing, okay, uh, set, finding a nice backdrop and uh, setting up a camera and talking at it, okay, uh, and then bringing it into YouTube, editing it any way you want, okay. Now, one, uh, it is a good idea, as far as I'm concerned, uh, for uh, having a editing platform, okay, to work from, okay, uh, be it uh, a Final Cut, be it Premiere, or be uh, uh, Abbott or Pinnacle or something like that. Uh, then you can edit your stuff, right? And you're not just putting it direct out of your camera or something like that uh, out into uh, YouTube space. I mean, you can set your cards, you can do little graphics and uh, narrate it, you know, put music on it, 
Definitely not. All that editing takes a lot of time, though, right? Yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking to a person who like uh -huh. who does this, who does likes to do this. Stuff. Right. Uh, you can bear it, you know, bear it down to just the essentials, you know. Just and what you could do is just cut heads and tails off and mm. put some black, you know, uh, to card at the front and back and throw it up. But that's then you you, you, you what you copy that, it, make that into uh, a file, right? And then that's what's uploaded, mm -hmm. okay, into YouTube. So I, I think it works great. One of the pitfalls of YouTube is, okay, I might go out and find this really cool uh, clip, okay, and I use Vimeo and other things other than just YouTube, okay. Uh, there are a lot of uh, daily motion, I mean, there are a lot of different uh, things to use other than just that. Google, right, of course, they're the same thing, really. Uh, but. Uh, you go out, and I've had this happen this summer. I'll say, whoa, you know, I got this great clip that is really demonstrating something. And then I go into class and it got taken down, hmm. you know, that quick, you know. So you do have to ride shotgun over those somewhat, you know, go in and check, make sure it's there. You can't do, uh, set up a class and expect it to run for 10 years without looking at it, hmm. okay. Uh, you have to maintain it. You have to, uh, it's like a garden. Right, you have to go in and take care of it. You have to weed it. You got to make sure, okay, that one didn't work. Go in and replace it with something else. What kind of visions do you have for the future of your use of YouTube or other platforms, video in general, in in, in your classes? Well, I, I guess I would have to say just increased vigilance and usage of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I had uh, envisioned at one time that I would. For every discussion, I would come on and talk, you know, and do something. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I was like, ugh, they want to see this guy again, you know, do that. So it's not necessary that you're always uh, yourself as a talking head. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I, I try to keep that more as a minimum. But as far as making, uh, for instance, a class that I'm teaching demonstrates a problem in understanding a certain, let's say, uh, cinematic principle. I'll go out and shoot it that afternoon and then pop it on there and say, look at that. You know, how, does that help? Okay. So I think the, the hands-on approach of that, they like. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, another thing, okay, visionary-wise, is it would be great for them to be able to have access to editing facilities and to make their own stuff and to put it up. That would be great. Any uh, advice for n new video producers out there? New Instructors new to video? Well, I would say How just start modestly, mm. okay? Uh, it, as you get used to doing it, it gets easier. Uh, you'll find that satisfaction, you'll find it rewarding, and that's the big thing, okay? The students do better. And uh, it, it just grows from there. You'll say, hey, I can do that. Now let's try this. Now I can do this and do this, and it's a sort of, uh, You'll become a Hollywood producer soon. But anyway, uh, th that's, that's my suggestion. Start small. Thanks for coming into the studio today. No problem. <laughs>